Hello everybody, welcome back to Dawn of Man HP. The fledgling settlement, wannabe settlement rather, of Inception, working to get itself going. And done a couple minor things, only a bit of time has passed, another work area there, and we've got a rock pile here. Very similar to the wood pile, costs nothing to build other than a bit of somebody's time. You get the four rocks there separating it out. You can choose whether to have each of these things put in there, obviously just open to everything at this point. Let's take a look over here at our skins dryer. We just put the second skin on there. And you can see by looking at the raw skins, they've got a health bar. And that's one of the most important aspects of the game, and I don't think I touched on it in the last video. Resource decay is a thing, and these only last for a season. Other stuff lasts longer. For example, our wonderful, if we can get over here to them, our sticks and our wood pile. Those last a full year, which is why they haven't deteriorated much at all. But it's a really important thing to keep in mind. The, the raw meat also only lasts the one season. So you don't want to just grab a bunch of something that's super perishable. It's just a waste of time. It's going to fade away and not going to be usable by the time you get around to it. So I want to take a look at some other resources and work area stuff here. All of these greenish plants are resource bearing ones as opposed to these which are just there, you cut them down for wood later on in the game. And most of these we can harvest in the summer, some in the winter. Or fall rather, excuse me, not winter. So for example the chestnuts, we can only collect those nuts in the fall and those can be eaten. Whereas you have stuff like this, the raspberries in the summer, blackberries in the summer, and so on. So I want to put up a work area because this is a really important way to supplement our food supply, especially early on. And we're going to do collect and harvest wild plants. Let's see, let's get all the way over here to that area. So we've got a nice group of stuff here. And this is a really concentrated group. If you see, you can look around like, I mean, there's a few things over here. And we've got some down here by the river, but this is a strong area for that. So this is going to end up being a nice starting location. Now, we're only going to, let's go with two people. And they'll only work on it during, while well, they're in season, obviously. And then we've got our limits for all this stuff. So vegetables, we're going to click that down to, and I like using the percentages here. 75% because they're only going to last one season, which means roughly one food per person. I could go up to 100%. I'm going to stick at 75%. I don't think we'll end up using more than that. That would mean with this many people, we'd probably grab four of them. And then I don't want to gather any grain. Oh, going the wrong way. And linens, because we can't really use those yet. So then if we take a look, there's a bunch of stuff we can do with work areas. We can just get rid of it. We can edit it, just pick it up and move it somewhere else, resize it, whatever. We can do the work areas panel, which shows all this. But, I mean, you can just click on... I mean, which sticks one do you want to go to? I find that not to be as useful as simply cycling through them using the bracket keys. And there we've got the work area, gather sticks. And I'm going to bump this down to 20. One, because I don't want to go any higher than that. I think 20 is enough. But then also just to show off this next little bit, because if we pop up here this other work area, it changed that value to 20 for here, even though it's got a different amount of people working on it. doesn't change the amount of people, just that amount. So... I think that works out really well. I like the way the work areas have been implemented. And then as we resume live action here, what do we want to do next? Well, we want to gather some stone. So I'm going to have them gather up this. And I, now going back here real quick, you can see that like these pretty much blend in to the surroundings. And there's multiple stone types, like types of deposits. These are the bigger ones. And we can't get those until we have composite tools. It's a mining operation. This is sort of the free, they're just laying there on the ground type of thing. And we're going to need two of them. You only get one from each of these small piles. So I'm going to select both of those. And then notice they're distinct from these. This is flint, which is used for different stuff entirely. And I don't really need those yet. So why am I even gathering these? Well, we want to build a hearth for cooking food. If you eat raw meat without it being cooked, which is going to happen here, then it really hits people's morale. It's interesting to me that it hits their morale and not their health. 
or not both at least but anyway i want to put these a bit because that's overlapping and then that would be free but there wouldn't be a lot of room to walk in between so let's move one more spot out here i want to give a decent decent amount of space for people to move around and then i also want to prioritize this tent still so what we're going to do is literally just set high priority and that way they'll work on that before they work on other tasks i hope we're up to about 10 sticks so not there, but I want to move down. Yeah, since we've got 10, let's just have each person working on, you know, one at each spot for now. And this gets two stone and six sticks. One of the reasons I'm building this now is that simply that it's the only thing left that's useful for me to build that does not require skins. And both of our skins over here, let's see how they're doing. One of them just finished, the other one's almost halfway. We'll be taking that one over here soon. But both of them have to be used for the tent. And so I don't want anything else getting in the way of that. Notice they've got this stone. They're hauling it over there. And by the way, this is now gone now. The entire pile is gone. And this is a really important fundamental shift in what's going on here. Because for the first time, we're reshaping the land. Up until this, we've been gathering sticks. We're hunting animals. You know, even if we pick berries out of bushes and trees or whatever, or building on like we're using the land as it is like maybe there's a little bit of grass that we're covering or whatever we're using the sun beating down on this to dry it but we're not actively changing the land i mean these stones how long have they been there probably thousands of years the, you know it's most likely that erosion caused something to break off and fall down off a hill or the last period of glacier activity in the previous epoch you know left a deposit there or i mean who knows how those stone was laid there exposed in amounts that we could pick up and use but now it's gone and we've literally reshaped the environment and so that's a really major fundamental advance in human history when we began to do that and this is just the very first aspect of it it will continue obviously but it's another step of separation between us and the rest of the wildlife around in terms of being able to take more advantage of the resources and so now we're just sort of waiting for them to get over here and take care of this tent and as soon as they're done with that and I think we're going over here to gather yep you're going to go to get that first skin and bring that over well it is now late spring and we're bringing over that final skin to get this tent moving on up our wonderful little child here Gorik is having a bit of an issue. Yellow is a warning, but these status icons that are orange, or they get worse if they're red, are a problem. Low stats will perform tasks at a reduced efficiency, and this is course is fatigued, but we can't do anything about that until the tent's built, and now she's gonna build this even less efficiently. Our wonderful hearth here, that is needing some stone, which we've already gathered up, but we haven't brought it over yet because we've set this to higher priority. We'll pop in here. And I think each of these buildings is worth seeing built at least once because I think they do a really good job of the gradual process here. Now, they've obviously dug holes in the ground, sort of post holes to stick these into, and they've got them tied up in some manner at the top. And here comes Varen Call over to help. It's worth asking is this how they really did this kind of thing at the time? Well, it's pretty close. I mean, the first ones probably had stones at the base, as far as we know. They're building a stabilizing ring around here. And they would have had either branches held in place by those stones, or even possibly we think a lot of them were built with bones, of like mammoths and whatnot. And then in colder times, they would have tents on top or in warmer environments, maybe just branches hanging over on top. But we definitely think that they used animal hides well before this time to cover their structures. So all of this is going well, and we're building this these sort of rings all the way up to the top. And soon we will, yep, there's another one. So it's the gradual process, and obviously stabilizing the bottom and then stabilizing the higher areas up as you go. So. Very logical build pattern here, and now we've got the beginnings of the hides themselves, or the skins, being put up there a little further. And we'll just speed this up a little bit. 
I don't want to speed it up too much because I have to be careful for the animals that are around. There we go. More of it is in place. And here, we, yep, now she's coming in to help as well. And you can just imagine everybody here is just exhausted. You can see, again, the icons. They're just sitting here and they're, they obviously really just want to go to sleep. Oh, now it's even worse. But you can't, you can't do that if you don't have anywhere to, you know, they're at the end of a long process. Everybody's bone weary, but they've got to finish it. And there we go. Now they've all finished their job and they're taking everything inside the tent. And kind of amusing thing that they're doing here is they're all going to sleep. They're leaving their kids outside. Where are they at? There we go. And they're exhausted too. But they're just leaving them out here to sort of fend for themselves while they get some sleep. And we've turned out a summer. We've got all of these available to be taken. But everybody's kind of busy now. If we take a look at the tent here. Got our sticks inside there. Now we're putting the raw meat in there. Yeah, that's pretty much, uh, there isn't much left of that. It's still edible. It won't be for long. But we've got, resources will last one and a half times as long in the structure. We get a point of prestige. And we can house three people. Now we're still not up to our population, but we're getting closer. And that prestige thing comes in here. So we've got all kinds of different summary stats here. And we'll go back to this. But then the welfare is really significant. It impacts the birth rate. And that's going to be very important to us. Stats, clothing, and food surplus. You can see we're not doing too hot right now. Not horrible. It was lower earlier. And then this is the prestige affects immigration and the trader arrival. It's not really going to be important to us in this game, but most of the time it would in fact be. And then of course we got plus one knowledge. We got five for having built the tent. And there isn't a whole lot for these them to do but they're collecting fruit from the trees so they're getting that summer job done slowly while our adults just sort of uh, rest up here so our adults have had a thankfully short nap rest recovers fairly quickly and they're back to work arian here is bringing over this stone to the hearth to get that construction going notice she's moving pretty slow and it also hurts your morale to carry heavy loads like that manually in the tent, we have Gork taking a rest. We have all this food in here, and we have sticks. We're going to just click this to kick them out, because I'd rather reserve that for food. And then our hearth is getting built. It's almost done. <laughs> there we go. We got more knowledge from that, and our current projects are finished. The hearth requires fuel from sticks, but that will not be a problem for us. We got plenty of those lying about. So what we need next really is more tools, and we can't build any yet. We need the building that makes them. We need spears. We need bifaces. We need clothes. We need lots of other things. And that is the crafter, which is larger than the tent in terms of size, but requires the same four sticks and two skins to construct it. So I want to throw that. Let's see. I think this is a good place. It's a little bit out from the edges of the clearing. We've got a wood pile there. We've got a rock pile here. So those are the main sources that we'll need to pull from. Then let's take a look, and we definitely need more skins. How are we going to get them? Things are pretty standard over here. We can see Amon moving back, going to get some sleep soon. And over this way, they just seem to like that lake, because our predators are going over that way. At least they're staying away from us. That one cave lion doesn't seem to be around here much. A bunch of reindeer over there. It's not a whole lot going on back this way. Whoops. If we swing out here... Well, that's, uh, that's an oryx, predecessor to modern cow. And then over here, we've got a donkey and an old boar. I think that's probably our best bet. Yeah, 90 health. Now, it's, it's a hike to get there, but I think it's going to be worth it in this case. So let's see. Nope, nope, I need... Yep, you're the one with the spear. So you head over there, and then while that's happening... I want to get some flint going, because we're going to need flint in order to build some of the things we're going to want to do with the crafters. So might as well get that stockpile going, particularly since we have may have the labor for it. So, obtain flint. Here's a supply over here. Of course, that one requires a mine, which we're not going to be able to do. 
as you can see, same thing as the stone ones. That's the flint version of it. But let's grab it from this area over here on the ground. And we want to have one person grabbing 10. That should be enough. And then we're going to be working on, of course, continuing to grab our wonderful berries and fruits and getting sticks replenished after putting a bunch of them. I think they already put them down, the ones for the crafter area. So let's speed this up a bit and see how our hunter is doing. Off he goes. I don't see the boar anymore. Has the boar moved? You're going to know where it is. You can show us. So it can be, I mean, the land's going to get in the way here, but it can be kind of fun to follow them along. There goes the boar. This is probably a good time to bring over a helper to carry back all of the wonderful things we're going to get from that boar, assuming that we're able to. Yeah, you're gathering sticks. Stop gathering sticks for now. You come over. Where's it going? Well, come over somewhere over this way. There it is. I think we're close behind. We are. So we're following the boar down to the river, it appears. So if that's where we're going, then of course we can see, yes, the boar is going to drink. We've got a donkey here. We've got that Oryx. Do we have anything else we need to worry about? We do not. Excellent. Go over there and get us the meat we need, and more importantly, the skins we need, because we got plenty of food for the moment. Approaching it from behind, and now Varenkal sneaks up. It's running. Will it be successful? This is going to be a really long thing if we... Okay, but we did make it. <sighs> We're going to have to carry that thing for like a year to get it back. Yeah, you're like way over here. <laughs> so... This is one of the things that can be troublesome with hunting. And we're getting into all kinds of other animals over here. And some of them are not too friendly. But we're going to make it. We're going to haul this thing all the way back to camp. And even when we do that, we are still going to need another kill in order to get anywhere. Because that's only going to give us the one skin. But, you know, you start with what you can have. And everybody else back here is going to stay busy. Towards the end of summer now, and we're off on another hunt trying to track down this boar over here. And on the previous hunt, one of the risks of doing a hunt so far away is that Varenkal actually butchered the thing and just sat down and started eating some of the raw meat because it was such a long journey back to camp. So if that happens, you kind of need a micro and have them forage a bit, get some to eat before they do the butchering. So that was sort of a minor mistake. And the only reason we're even going after an adult boar, you can see health is 80. We're chasing it over this way is I mean it's they're faster and everything but we don't really have much choice there's nothing else around for us to really do and we need more skins so I decided I'd give it a shot here even knowing it was fairly low odds and we're kind of getting tired now and it's fast enough to just elude us and we can't it's hard for us to get in shots on it so you know we need higher damaging weapons we need better weapons we need more hunters to get more shots on it before it gets away none of that happening here so that's a failed hunt and now he's exhausted he's gonna have to go back to camp and recover his energy etc then we had something else that went on over here and i had to really be careful and see all of our wonderful cave lions and they went and took down some ranger you can see one of them here bingo and they actually took down a second one and what I was doing during that time period is I just moved all of my people away from them because I could see that they were getting hungry. So I just moved them up over on this hill so they were further away and they'd be more enticed to go after something closer by. So that could have very, very easily ended up in some dead citizens. And sometimes you can't even get around it. We will be the victim of attacks at some point, but we made it there. So right now we're just kind of stuck. 
because there's nothing good in our area to hunt, but all we can do in the meantime is just sort of forage for stuff. We can't get any more work done until the crafter is finished. We've got plenty of food. We've got plenty of sticks. We've got plenty of flint bone that we can't use. So we're just sort of locked into this position. We've got to wait for some sort of game to come by. As we can see, now the fall has arrived. So hopefully we'll get something in that area soon. A bit later in the fall, everybody is rested up. The camp is peaceful. We do still have this cave bear over here. but It's actually just eating on some shrubs over there. Everything appears to be fine. But sometimes it's better to be opportunistic than to be good. And in this particular case, it's the same boar over here. It came back, or not just came back, it was over here. It wandered across the river towards our camp. Of course, it didn't know it was coming towards our camp, and we're not going to stare a gift horse in the mouth here. So let's go ahead and see if we can hunt it. There's Flint giving us another knowledge point. Oh, we hit it once, but now it's running away. So let's see, where's it going to run? I think we only need to hit it one more time. Oh, it stopped and laid down. It must be tired or something. Well, now it's more than tired. Now it is a goner. Okay, so let's see. How are we doing here? The thing is, I think we're kind of hungry, so I think we need to get something done here. What kind of tree is that? That's pears. That's probably a pear tree also. Well, you know what? We're going to go all the way back here. Or perhaps... Maybe this is the one I'm looking for. Yeah, chestnuts. Chestnuts are in season. That's what I want. Okay. So... Because I want you to be eating that and then not eating the raw meat off of this. That's my goal. Okay, so if we speed up while you do that, then we'll have you come butcher this. But we're going to get this boar... And the key point here is that we have skins, two of them from this. So that's really going to help us out. Now I want to take a look at these toolbars for a bit while he's wandering off and doing that. This is the standard resource one. And the one over here is what's known as general. And I want to go with the grouped resources because then you have, you know, like your food and your raw resources and your weapons all split out in a sensible manner. Let's keep an eye on you. And then I also want to add in a couple of other things. This is just attachments, is like carts or whatnot. And then we've got animals. And the speed, I just use the one through four hotkeys. Defense, you can use the hotkey. I like to have up these charts. You see, the food has been pretty steady. All right, now he's coming back to butcher. That's good. And then straw, we don't have yet. Workload, you can see it's gone down and up. But it's mostly been fairly low since we ran out of things to hunt. So now we're looking a little bit better over here. We're going to go ahead and butcher this. And you know what? It probably wouldn't hurt to bring somebody with. How are you doing? Yeah, you've got plenty of food recently. You're not doing anything particular at the moment. You come over here and help carry this back. And that should work out well for everybody involved. Continuing to work on the butchering then. I think we have everything in order at the moment. Almost done. You can see it gradually diminishes as it goes. And there we are. Bingo, bingo. Now you are bringing back, or you're going to drink, but you're bringing back all of that food. And here comes, make sure you grab these skins. There's probably, a, yep, there's a bone down here too. I want to make sure we get all of that. But more importantly, we just got our final knowledge point. If we head back to this, you can see that we've got raw meat above 10. Now the next point, we're going to get to 100. We've got raw skin coming, dry skin coming. Sticks are also up to the 100. We've got the berries and fruit and all of those kinds of things. Nuts. But we have enough to get something done here. So if we look at the stuff we've got, bone tools, just improved tools. We're not even making basic tools yet. Probably don't want to go there yet. Composite tools, unlocks, mining and tree cutting and a bunch of other things. Sling making is a bit of a better ranged combat thing, helped with hunting and so on. 
food drying to preserve our protein for longer. That's going to be important. We can domesticate dogs. Tanning for tanning our hides into leather. Could make more things out of that. And then funerary rituals, burials, and spirituality. Okay, so one of the oldest things in here is the one I'm going to go with for a couple reasons. One is just for our protection. We're going to get dog domestication. And generally, what is considered to have happened, I think it's about twenty to 40,000 years ago or ten to 30,000 years before even the official time period that starts this game, but tamer wolves would surround the camp eventually, come closer and closer, humans would feed them, and they would gradually be domesticated into society. And we are confident that's the first animal that humans domesticated. And we think it was about that time frame that they started traveling around the world with human societies. And in the game, you don't have to feed the dogs. You don't really have to do anything. They're just sort of an automatic. They will periodically come to the camp, but they essentially function as an early warning system. Any more wild animal attacks that we have, they will show up and help us out with those. Nope, you're not going anywhere. And so it provides a significant amount of protection, especially considering how small we are and how limited we are in our combat abilities right now. Getting that extra protection is vital, especially since it's not going to suck any resources out of us. So that's what we're going to be doing, and we should have them showing up in our next session. Winter is coming to inception, but we have what we need to get this crafter up and going. We're not as prepared as I'd like to be, but I think that we will be fine in terms of surviving it. We'll see how that goes next time. Till then, thanks for watching. More Dawn of Man coming up soon.